Salams and welcome to a brand new presentation from the NewsClick Sports Desk. This is Playthings and we've got with us our very reticent, very camera shy sports editor. But in the spirit of things, it's a new season. Uh, we seem to have uh, developed kind of our own protocols to counter the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. And we have Leslie Xavier back in the studio with us to start off what we hope will be uh, weekly conversations around the biggest stories in Indian sport. Uh, Les, how are you doing? Uh, it's good to be back <laughs> and yeah, good to talk about sport other than over phone and Zoom calls. Zoom calls, <laughs> hours of gyan and yeah. all those things. So it's, yeah. I believe we'll time this so yeah. we should be we'll, crisp. We'll and be crisp and to the point as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So taking uh, three to four to five stories depending on how busy the week is, four to five minutes on each story. And we're starting off by riding on Smriti Mandana's excellent ton uh, in the test that is currently going on, day two day of the two, test match. Exactly. Uh, what's the update on that? Did you watch any of it? And uh, and how how is sort of how is that team shaping up? What are the key issues that are facing women's cricket? Of course, it's great to see one of our players scoring ton, and it happens to be the first ton by a woman cricketer in Australia. Test, of course, the woman test matches as such is is pretty rare mm. too, and it's the highest test score by an Indian woman as well. So, uh, great show by Mandana. Great uh, on many counts, considering also the fact that they hardly get any matches to play. Compare, I mean, and the direct comparison should be made to the Australian women who are playing because they get their domestic season, they mm. get their big bash league. Yeah, mm. shorter format for sure, but any format would do. So, uh, if you look back at the last two years, of course, we know, we all know how many matches the men have played. Hmm. They, have, they have gone through almost two IPLs. The second IPL, I mean, just getting over. And they have had multiple series, home, abroad. And uh, while the women, uh, just before lockdown hit across the world, they, they reached the finals of the World T20, uh, which they lost. And then that was March 8th. And from March 8 to 2021, February, they never had any international matches, as mm. said. And the only matches that they got, the elite Indian cricketers, mm. were, were the three IPL matches which was thrown to them in the Middle East, mm. in, in Abu Dhabi. More like a charity or a... Yep. You know, I mean, yep. so, so that's the state of game. So before the test match, uh, Indian cricketers, the senior cricketers were quoted different news sources, news agencies that they would like to play the longer format domestically. Mm. They, they want to play the red ball game mm. domestically so that uh, when a one-off test or such test series, is, you can't call it a series again, it's a one-off one -off, match. Right. So, so when such matches happen, it's not like they're getting in and surprise. surprise. <laughs> and having said that, the I mean, with, with the surprise element or with the lack of I mean, experience and they are playing pink ball mm. as well. So, mm. Mm. Uh, they are faring quite well. Uh, they are in a good position uh, on day two. By, by uh, The play was curtailed because of a thunderstorm there. Mm. But in, they have, in the, India have lost five wickets and they are uh, uh, more or less looking, we are more or less looking at a game that will last the distance, very important because pink ball tests don't last. Mm. And so the Indian men's team can probably look at how the women are playing, how they adapted in, towards this game and mm. see what they where they're doing wrong because Australians have always done, the men's team have always done great in pink ball cricket. Uh, uh, so doing well in that format without any experience going in and playing that, sh that shows a lot of, I mean, that shows how much of character we have, the mm. women cricketers. Mm. Just that we need to do better for them. The BCCI should, should, should do better. better for them. Yeah, it was an interesting and surprising thing, actually, for us. We were talking on our show, 420 Grams, uh, about football. And we did a sort of a pandemic report relating to women's football and what's been happening in India. And, of course, many of us who are involved with football were talking about how little has happened on, on the women's front. And our colleague and senior journalist Sharda Ugra was on that show and she was saying, what are you guys talking about? At least something is happening. At least conversations are happening. 
क्रिकेट में विच वी अज्यूम बींग सच अ रिच स्पोर्ट द बी सी सी आई बींग वन ऑफ द रिचेस स्पोर्ट्स बॉडीज इन द वर्ल्ड दी अजम्पन फ्रॉम द आउटसाइड इज दैट स्ट्रक्चरल इशूज विल नॉट टेक प्लेस इन दिस काइंड ऑफ अ सिनारियो विच इज नॉट एट ऑल सीम्स टू बी द केस Yeah, I just spoke about the elite Indian cricketers. Yeah. That so, what about the domestic players who are there, mm. the upcoming players also? Mm. This has created quite a bit of a. I mean, BCCI claims, and possibly rightfully also, in the last few years, women's cricket have come up. The mm. cricketers have come up for sure, Absolutely. but I'm not sure about women's cricket as such because the system is so, uh, I would say, ad hoc in a way. Uh, With the limited structure that is there for the women's game in the country, hmm. which is now being ignored, I don't know how we will be able to create the next line of players for the country. That's that's because we are we are looking at quality players, right? It's not like names to fill in yeah. fill in the roster. So yeah. that's 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 suffered, and uh, also what is suffering is something that would that football is going through at this moment. Whether young players would want to come into play play cricket, if if they feel that they don't have a future in it, career wise as well as Sports in the game wise. in the game. Yeah. So I had a former India international. This was last year the discussion I had with her early last year before lockdown, around the time of the World Cup, in fact. And she has retired from international in the sense she was eased out of the team. Mm. Uh, Must be in her early thirties, and she has no idea what she is going to do because domestically she can't. There is no not much tournaments to play, mm. and she wants to get into commentating. Unsure about that, so that's the thing. Lack of clarity for an international player. So you can only imagine what happens, what happens down down, 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 down the chain. Down the chain. Fair enough. Uh, it's our first day, so you will forgive us that we have violated our own rules. The very first story. चार से पांच मिनट हमने बात करनी थी आई थिंक दस मिनट तो ऑलरेडी हो चुके हैं बट क्या किया जाए मंडानाबल What is bubble fatigue? We're not talking about the IPL. We're just talking about the bubble and and him deciding that for the sake of his own mental wellness, yeah. he has decided to exit the bubble and recuperate, recover, and prepare for the upcoming ICC T20 World Cup. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. So uh, is uh, so Chris Gayle's journey in the past few months has taken its toll, I would say, because he was with the West Indies national team bubble. and then he was in the caribbean premier league bubble and after that he came directly to the to the middle east to the ipl bubble mm. and then now after this he will be going to the t20 world cup bubble so <laughs> finally he got sick of bubbles uh it's uh, it's uh, it's a regi- i mean you have been in your in, in a bubble in that sense football bubble right so i believe it's 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 a regimentation that gets to you the routine the and also the control that the people the support staff around you have as far as how your day goes mm. so that that eventually gets to you and for some a player like chris gale who as free as he is in his in his in his, in his ways about in and outside the pitch mm. these are the kind of players who get probably readily more effective affected by this than than players so uh, it's very clear right we have different personalities in in within a team yeah so but i'm glad that it is uh, someone has come out and by stepping out of the bubble brought out brought this into attention because we when we talk about playing out the ipl season or when we talk about players going to the uk or going to the world cup to play and all that we talk in terms of teams and covid protocols and covid safety and all that but we never never consider factors such as these where the mental well being of the player is in question mm. and that directly affects the game the quality of the game mm. it also at some point will affect his his physical well being as well yeah so uh i guess over the course of the pandemic 
and this probably you can shed some light how the football teams are, are, are managing abroad because I believe they don't operate in a bubble as, as such. Mm. And, and so we are talking about professional sport being played uh, through the year and probably it's, it's, it's about time that our agencies which conduct leagues should look at how to ease the players' suffering, if at all we can call it a suffering inside the bubble. Uh, just. Oh man, you are widening the scope of uh, the conversation considerably, but I'll attempt to answer as quickly as possible. Uh, just by, I mean, I think firstly I agree with you completely. I'm glad that someone of as much stature as Chris Gale uh, yes. has has come out and done this because the attitude towards athletes, towards sports people, is that they should put their head down, do the hard work, and keep going. What we are, I think, we fail to consider many times is that. You are being forced to play these 300 days of cricket in a year. Not because you are getting better at the game that you are playing. Uh, not, not because of because your country needs you. But because there is a lot of money riding on, yeah. on these games. And the more amount of game time you get on television, the more money everyone makes outside of the system. Of course, the players also get some yeah. part of it. But it's, it's a well-known fact how little of the entire BCCI or ICC chunk actually goes down to the player level. So, so that's one part. Uh, the second part is, yeah, definitely we need. To, there needs to be a calendar, mm -hmm. right? So when you compare football, uh, firstly, one major difference is that all of these European leagues, all of the football that's played in the global north, has very different connotations. Mm -hmm. One is that mainland Europe travel is much easier. Uh, the kind of access to medical care, to vaccines, all of that is much better for them than the rest of the world. As we've seen, I think 80% of all the vaccines available in the world have gone to these 10 countries, yeah. right? So they operate in a completely different scenario and each of them is a multi-millionaire at, at that level. So they can build a bubble around themselves wherever they go. As we can, we've, we saw when, for example, Messi moved from mm. Barcelona to Paris. You know? So it's just that that entire entourage bubble, entire system yeah. just picks itself up and transplants itself elsewhere. Yeah. So comparisons with football, I think, are, are tough to make in a cricket context. But we should, cricket should remember where it comes from, where its base lies. Yeah. Uh, and kind of factor those elements in, not just use our players and athletes as uh, sort of, yes, and no doubt well-paid labor. Mm -hmm. But just labor that can just keep producing, keep producing irrespective of what's going on around them. And I think in our approach to how we also deal with when players make statements like this, a little bit more sensitivity can be uh, a good thing. I believe uh, that is what this fatigue uh, or a version of it is what led to the uh, COVID-19 situation when India were touring in the UK yeah. towards the end of it. Yeah. So it was a long tour, yeah. World Test Championship and then the limited overs matches and then the Test Series. So, mm -hmm. so ultimately, people started easing off a little. It, it happens and yeah, so yeah, yeah. that's a reality also, right? So fatigue means it's not necessarily player breaking down. It mm. could be the entire system, system. collapsing. Yeah, complacency does set yeah, in, no yeah. doubt, no doubt. So anyway, we'll, we'll leave that at that. Yeah, yeah. I think one of the things we can also propose since this is the first show that we are doing, if any of the topics that we cover on this bulletin format uh, particularly appeals to you and you want us to do a more in-depth conversation around that, please write in in the comments. Let us know what you want to hear more of so that we can also tailor these conversations uh, somewhat to cater to what your, uh, not needs, but your wants are. Because after all, we are all playthings of Play alien things. forces. Yeah. <laughs> 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 all right. All right. That was nicely done. I'll give yeah. myself a pat on the back for that one. Should I? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, no. But so, okay. So from a, from a, from a temporary uh, exit from a bubble, we are now talking about a more permanent exit from a bubble of a different sort. Yeah, so 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 our next story, we're, we're talking about hockey and, and the spate of retirements back-to-back uh, -back that have come about senior players kind of calling time in a sense on their own international careers, their careers playing for India, representing India. Uh, we've seen Birendra Lakra, uh, Rupinder Pal Singh, both members of the bronze medal winning team at the Tokyo Olympics recently, as well as S.V. Sunil, one of the most talented, some people would say, one of the most gifted forwards that Indian hockey has 
uh, yeah, produced in the recent yeah. past, at least uh, this generation of players, let's not get into comparison with others. Uh, all of them, uh, Sunil not so much retiring, yeah. but Hockey India coming out with a tweet immediately after congratulating him and wishing him a happy re retirement. So, as far as uh, all practical purposes are concerned, it's the end of SV Sunil of in, in India colours as well. Yeah. What is bringing about this kind of dharadhar chain reaction? <laughs> uh, surprising actually, it's shocking, surprising, which, whichever way you want to present that, interpret it, Hockey India's mm -hmm. interpretation I'm thinking about. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I would like to believe that when a player wins a medal, especially if he's, I mean, for instance, Rup Rupinder Pal is just 30 and uh, Lakra is 31. Mm -hmm. So, Sunil 32. Sunil 32. So, but Sunil, I mean, I'm talking about these two because they are medalists. Right. right. And so, they are, uh, I mean, if I win an Olympic medal, I'll be invincible for the next 10 years. Mm. So I, at least I'll tell myself that yeah, I, <laughs> I can't retire now. So, there is this, again, so on one side, there is this concept of giving it, uh, calling it a day on a high, mm. going out on a high or whatever. But uh, as a professional athlete, 30 is not an age to retire. Mm. And it's not like, yeah, these two players, Sunil, also now I will get Sunil into the uh, mix as well. They have all had injuries, but any sportsman, uh, sports person in the modern era will have injuries. So that's a given. If you are playing at the high level, you will have Nichols major injuries as well. But yeah. you recover. Sports science, performance size, science are in that that stage that a player's upbringing from the junior ranks into the national system, into the elite system, mm. elite level, is an investment in itself. So. Hockey India also giving up on these players and happily saying happy retirement is surprising in itself because they don't understand what they are losing out because you have invested eight nine years of your uh, of the setup that you have created for player building nurturing and maintaining and then just letting them go and I mean wherever they would continue playing maybe for their domestic uh, employers mm. when, in in the domestic circuit maybe mm. maybe some clubs mm. but it doesn't serve Indian hockey at all. Hmm. So these are elite players, like you said, rightly said as well. So SP Sunil, one of the best players, is a treat to watch. Yeah, fit, fittest, fittest in the mix. And what, uh, a, what a brain he has. Yeah. <laughs> so so uh, wouldn't the youngsters find it better? Because if you look at the common element in these statements that these players have given out, they all say that we are giving way for youngsters. Hmm. They are not saying that we are retiring because I have an injury or I can't play mm -hmm, anymore. Mm -hmm. So, uh, giving way for youngsters is done better if if they are in that mix, in the camp system, in the outer camp, I mean in the larger pool of players. And they are there, they play, that the youngsters fight and, I mean it's, it's, it's sport we are talking about. And sport you don't just give up mm. on yourself. Mm. Yeah, there is always a shelf life for an athlete. but. As far as modern science and sports science and the current system is, uh, 30 is not an age to retire mm. at all. So that makes us wonder what the larger dynamic is at play, and also what, what how, how hockey India in general operate about transitioning of one generation to other. How do how do how do they plan it? Because this clearly is not the right way, and this is not exactly. The first time, at least because these two are medalists and then S.V. Sunil also announced it around the same time. So there is some kind of uh, statement coming out, attention being given to them. Yeah. But otherwise, if you look at the last 10 years, there have been many unceremonious exits and Quite great players. Really disappeared. Great players. So some, of course, there are, I mean, multiple sources which, which, which spoke about politics and dynamics within Hockey India and standing of the particular player with with the establishment, with mm. the bosses of the establishment. Mm. And others, maybe because they, they don't fit into the team system, but probably Hockey India should uh, treat their players well. Mm. You're talking about players who have played 200 plus matches for mm. the country. And, or, and the other part is that utilize them for a larger good of Indian Hockey, at least briefly. And the other point that would help them is 
the players themselves because they would this would probably act as a bridge for them to be players of the national team playing mentors mentors coach mm. and then you are feeding whatever, yes. uh, then that cycle comes like yeah. you are feeding into that system yeah. but we have lost many great international players a brain like sp sunil potential to lose him as well because he is going out of the system abruptly mm. 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 I, at this point i think this is a slightly conjecture or speculation but uh, i also get the feeling that the role that hockey india perhaps uh, envisages for some of these guys is to play hockey in the boardroom uh, and to play a more active role because as you, uh, from all of the statements that you're hearing there's a uh, the commonality is the thank yous to hockey mm -hmm. india for for the opportunities that they've been given and no doubt uh, one has to uh, give whatever credit is due there because they have created some kind of a platform because it's a sport that really professionally does not exist in india yeah. outside of the national team yeah, environment yeah. So these players have benefited from that, from the training, from all the centers that have been established in various places, and the care that has been taken. So they have thanked Hockey India, and I feel like maybe uh, there is an angle that these uh, players will become more active, perhaps in their state associations, and and we will hear more of them in an administrative capacity. But at this point, we we leave it at that, and uh, we'll follow up with this story yeah. with you later on uh, as things develop. uh and i think the last bit that is interesting in this context and this this will also feed into our final story of the day which is uh to talk about the saf football championships that are actually getting underway in the maldives today uh, october 1st oh sorry this show will go out tomorrow so it would have already started by the time we uh, we are on youtube um which is ageism essentially mm -hmm. and this uh, my friends our friends who play football manager will understand this really <laughs> well uh, when players start making their full team debuts at the age of 16 and 17 there's very little space then for the 30 year olds you know yeah. they become uncles very quickly yeah uh, i'm sure it's something that you have experienced on the playing field yourself <laughs> no i retired <laughs> quite young <laughs> i retired in my teens uh, so yeah no so 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 uh, i was just going to say that like there has to be other than uh, this very kind of cursory or superficial understanding of when a player is young enough or too old uh, must be thought of in a more holistic manner i think because you have plenty of examples around the world of top level athletes uh, men women playing well into their 30s and in fact some of them achieving some of their best on field performances later on in life You're talking about Leander Fes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. We yeah. don't have to look too far. Yeah, we don't have to. Uh, no, seriously, but he is, he is a doubles player. Yeah, and but and he is probably overstayed his welcome at, in the Olympic setup. But uh, the the way he takes care of his fitness is phenomenal. Attention to detail, all these things. Mm. So I'm saying every professional athlete does that. Mm. And uh, so the classic example is the Italian system where lo player longevity was a given mm -hmm. because the club takes care of their health, mm -hmm. their their well-being. The, well -being, the, the their famous fitness. Milan lab. Lab, Milan lab. Uh, so uh, it's again for for the club it's beneficial also, right? It's 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 an investment that they made and they're stretch. I mean, squeezing the uh, everything out of that mm -hmm. without killing. the body and the mind of the player in that yeah. that way so uh it's uh, this idea that at 30 you are done with is 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 something something very wrong I, i i don't know what has created it maybe like you said with with youngsters academies pumping in more younger players and then this the this again we have discussed ourselves when we plan shows and all that how to target younger audience mm. young star younger fan for direct kind of direct correlation mm. so so clubs also slowly gyrate towards that unless of course you are dealing with someone like ronaldo or mm. <laughs> sunil chetri yeah sunil chetri in india for that matter probably the only 30 year old in in this indian football team that that is in the maldives yeah so so uh, it's 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 business related but again sound business sense would be the other way around sound football sense or sound sports sense would be the other way around and the i mean we are specifically talking about team dynamics but individual sport it's 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 a different ball game altogether that yeah. way 
uh, the dynamics at play because you have Federer still playing yeah. in his prime. You have yeah. Nadal, you have, uh, who is unbeatable, provided he doesn't have some kind of injury issues mm -hmm. that way. So, uh, Novak will disagree. But uh, anyway. Yeah, so <laughs> it's, it's that uh, uh, careers, sporting careers, Probably in certain aspects, and this I'll talk about the defenders who retired from the Hockey India setup, uh, Rubinder and Lakra, and to an extent Sunil as well. That uh, after 30 is when a defender or a goalkeeper matures, and uh, because the game understanding all these things, it it it's the peak reading of the game, all these things. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's 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 a sin to actually. Call. I mean, let them retire. If if you if I can say that, if, if believing or asserting that the decision was theirs. Uh, otherwise, yeah, Indian football team you mentioned, Sunil Chetri is playing, he's scoring goals, breaking records, and and quite consistently also at the club also he plays well. Mm -hmm. He has been particular about his fitness. Absolutely. And uh, uh, Indian team heading into the SAF games, it's it's off season that way. Hmm. So, this would probably be the build-up for them, game-wise, towards the ISL. But at the same time, it's also a crucial tournament for Steam Arch because from qualifying for the FIFA World Cup to qualifying for the Asia, I'm trying to qualify for the Asian Cup to FA saving victory at the SAF Games because this would probably two counts, one silverware comes in. Mm. And secondly, his statistics as a coach might improve mm. as well. So, yeah. uh, what is exactly at stake for India at the SAF Cup? Because for me, being a sports journalist but, and a football fan who doesn't cover football, I see it as a very redundant tournament, if at all India is claiming to be aspiring. Yes and no. Yes, that... Uh, these kind of hyper-regional tournaments, I mean, firstly, there is the fact that if you look at Afghanistan, for example, Afghanistan very recently left the South Asian Football Federation mm -hmm. and joined the, uh, I think, West Asia, Central maybe. Yeah. So that they get more regular games against higher ranked higher countries. Ranked, yeah. right? uh, because India have over the years, if you look at, let's say, the 15-20 years that I have been covering football. India's performances at the South Asian level have not, I mean, you would assume that if everything was directly proportionate to the amount of investment that comes in, then India's results at the South Asian level should have gone through the roof. Yeah. That has not been the case. Uh, at the same time, it is relevant because one is that we should, I think, uh, always maintain friendly relations with the countries in our neighborhood. Uh, football is, I think, a universal <laughs> language. In that sense, everyone is a fan almost, uh, everyone follows the sport and it allows uh, countries from a region that is otherwise quite diverse, sometimes can be politically very mm -hmm. volatile, to find some kind of common meeting ground. So, so I think these tournaments do have value, uh, whether they have a value at that elite level in terms of doing the best for uh, a potential national team that is looking to do something at the continental or the global level, we are not there yet. Firstly, we shouldn't assume that because we are not there yet. Recent results have clearly shown that. Even in the friendlies that we played uh, against Nepal mm -hmm. recently, yeah. it was one draw and one narrow single goal margin victory. So, I think uh, the general big brother approach that India has in the region has also kind of taken hold in the football sense. Mm -hmm. But all the other countries are demonstrating to us that you are not necessarily big brother, we are all uh, very much at power with each other. Mm -hmm. It's just that you have managed to evolve a system based on uh, an in inflow of capital through the ISL and, mm -hmm. and other means that our players are today much better paid than yeah. players in other countries. But that doesn't necessarily mean that on the pitch uh, there's very much to differentiate between the two. And what, just connecting it back to the ageism uh, point, we, we have seen in the recent past that there is a definite lack of ideas and thought, particularly in the midfield and central midfield area. Because all of these young players who are coming through 
an academy model that is kind of photocopied from one another. It's a blueprint academy model. They are all being trained to play in particular positions in a particular style. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of focus on, of course, physical fitness. Yeah. There's a lot of focus on speed. Uh, there's a lot of focus on wing play, mm -hmm. right? But technique is, as a result, being neglected. Footballing intelligence, because as we've talked about many, many times, the number of games that players are getting out, yeah. very little. The only way to develop, like you were saying, in the context of Rupinder or uh, Sunil, mm -hmm. having played those 200, 300 games, your, that's how your, your game intelligence yeah, develops, develops. Which in a footballing context is definitely not happening. So if nothing else, going back to your question about the relevance of the SAF championships, it's great that India will, India's men's team, and now the women are also in Dubai, they will also play some friendlies. Uh, but the men's team will at least get four uh, fixtures against competitive teams of almost a similar level. And hopefully then they make it through the final and uh, we have a chance to celebrate some silverware. The dynamic is different from hockey in, in many ways, football's yeah. dynamic. So yeah. I feel that here the, I, the stance that I would take would be to send a uh, under 20 to the side. Why? Because uh, that's the, those are the players, I mean, we are looking at future that way, right? So, mm -hmm. the full strength national squad is, uh, of course, they also need, sadly, they also need match time. Mm -hmm. But the younger players don't get as much match time even in the ISL. They are benched, they come in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, this would be an ideal situation for them to play a make their international debuts or get some international play time and secondly play as a unit and figure out other things so as far as match time is concerned uh, a younger sending a younger team a junior team or an under 20 team because that's the that's the side that would play mm -hmm. in i mean if at all india sends its team they will, they can play in the asian games next year mm -hmm. so uh, why not look in that direction and build from the AFF in the context of saf I know it's it's not I mean elite level football tournament, and so but still it's competitive, mm. and Indian under twenty three players are not too far behind the seniors. I, there are many things that they need development, but yeah, yeah, but, yeah, no. So to a large extent, I think the team is uh, made up of young players. Juniors, yeah. yeah, and uh, the under twenty three AFC qualifiers are also coming up. Mm. So I think Steam Match and and the Think Tank are looking at it from that perspective. So you will see. Uh, quite young, oh, young, young, young squad. Yeah, I think uh, maybe uh, two or three players who are in key positions aside. Mm -hmm. Mostly, we will see younger, younger players mm -hmm. playing. So, so that bit of approach is there. But for me, it kind of conflicts with the reality. Yeah, yeah. which is that that we need to have that kind of quality and and what w the many things that, for example, a Sunil brings to the pitch, mm -hmm. which you only get through doing things. Uh, again over and again and, over, and, yeah, and over, learning from, yeah. from that process. But anyway, we will be, uh, of course, at 420 Grams covering the SAF Championship uh, closely. We'll have daily shows. Sorry, I keep looking at the screen. I should be looking at the camera. Uh, but uh, we will be covering the, the SAF Championship India matches particularly uh, in detail on 420 Grams. The first of those shows will be a preview show that you can watch on October 3rd, uh, which is Sunday, I think. Uh, that will be on our YouTube channel and, and on NewsClick's YouTube channel as well. Uh, meanwhile, we've gone well over time, so we're going to wrap up this ep first episode of Play Things here with Leslie. Thanks for joining us, Leslie. Uh, I mean, good to have you back. Yeah, pleasure. Um, and uh, yeah, let us know. Write in, comment, like, subscribe. Or if you don't like, tell us that as well. Thank you for watching. Stay safe. See you soon.